Hello, it's Scott Manley here, continuing my beginner's playthrough. Um, so you may notice that this is lower resolution, <laughs> because I'm trying to do this on holiday. Anyway, we want to upgrade the R&D facility before we return to the moon, because that gives us surface samples. And to do that, we need money. And to do, get money, of course, oh, we do man. contracts. Now, there's a bunch of new contracts that have appeared that we haven't covered out how to do them. So we have Rescue Wenny Kerman from the Orbit of Kerbin. This is a good one because, of course, it gets you money and it gets you a free Kerbal, which, of course, Kerbals cost money to hire. Alternatively, there is put a satellite into a specific orbit. In this case, you have a polar orbit and the other one is just an orbit with numbers attached. Those numbers probably don't mean very much to you. However, I'm going to accept one of these. I'm going to accept the polar one because it makes more money and it's probably going to be the hardest out of plane maneuver we can do. Now, if you go to the tracking station and uh, you can see the orbits here, one is in blue and one is in red. So I'm guessing the red one is the contract I accepted because that looks like a polar orbit. The blue one is not a polar orbit, it's just some sort of inclined orbit. There we go. And if you mouse over, it shows you the name of the, the companies that are offering them. So you can go back to the mission control and accept the relevant one. Anyway, to put a spacecraft into orbit, we obviously need to build one. Now, before you build anything, you should probably check that you're hitting, you ha you're fulfilling the requirements of the contract. So clicking on the contract, you actually see the first item is says that it needs an antenna and can generate power. So the probe you want is the octagonal one because it has stability control and to that you need to attach a pair of photovoltaic cells. That's the way you generate power. And to store that power it's probably good to have a pair of batteries as well. I'm just using symmetry on this. You press X to increase symmetry and shift X to decrease symmetry. Now for our communications, well you either have the Communitron 16 or the DTSM. Well the 16 is lighter and cheaper. And uh, in fact, it's a physics-less part, so you can put as many of those on and it won't increase your weight. Now you want some aerodynamics, and we have the small nose cone, which is all right, I guess, or I could add some future-proofing to this spacecraft and add the ability to return it. It costs 422, and it is aerodynamic. We'll just stick that on the front there. So if we ever feel the need to return the satellite for, you know, maybe there's a contract that helps us, we can do that. So the upper stage is gonna do most of our maneuvering in, st in space. So we use the very efficient LV-909 uh, upper stage engine, and uh, we attach that to uh, an FLT-200 fuel tank. Now to actually get it up there, we're gonna need a little more fuel. So we're gonna build a main stage here, which uh, we're just gonna copy these. Again, you hold the Alt key and you click and it duplicates. So I can do that repeatedly and now we're building ourselves a pretty long main stage here. And I'm gonna use the LVT45. This is a better engine in general, even though it's lower thrust because it has stability control. Now, this is not gonna be very fast accelerating off the pad, so to help it, I'm adding a pair of RT10 solid rocket boosters just to give it that initial kick up to speed and we'll put parachutes on these because you never know might be able to recover this thing so what else we're going to need probably some aerodynamics here and i'm just going to go with the basic fins these are new in 1.02 which uh they, they, you know, they provide very limited stability control they will be the first thing to burn off your spacecraft and finally I'm going to use these launch clamps. Now the launch clamps are important with probe launches because the probes use electrical power and you need the, and the, the launch clamps will continue to provide electrical power because the worst thing is to have your probe ready to launch and then find out that you've run out of power. So I'm going to call this Porto Rosso, red port or whatever. Check your staging. Yes, make sure that goes in the first stage here and we'll fire all our engines initially. And we'll save that, and that's us ready to go. Now, it's very important, we are trying to go for a specific orbit here. So when you're trying to go into a specific orbit, you want to make sure you launch at the right time to minimize the amount of inclination change you need later, right? You basically need to be aligned with your orbit, and the polar orbit is the most important one. So we've got everything set up here, go into the map, and bring up the nav ball as usual it's always good to have that now you see that red orbit that's the one we're aiming for and you can see little dots showing the direction of the orbit as well that is very important that you pay attention to those 
Now, to line it up, I'm more or less putting... I'm looking close at the planet, and what I want is to have the spacecraft on the near side uh, with the orbit in the background going downwards, because we're going to go north, and then we're going to basically match the orbit here. So there we go. See that? That's us ready to launch. We're lined up. So we're going to launch to the north and go up over the top and eventually get into this orbit. And we have to match the orbit as accurately as possible. But we're lined up, ready to go. So throttle to 100% and hit the launch button. Now immediately we are going to turn engine over. Watch our speed. Our speed goes up very quickly, right? So as soon as we get above about 150, I throttle back to about 30% thrust because those engines on the outside, the solid rocket boosters, are really doing most of the work. As soon as those jettison, we ditch them and throttle back to 100%. That just stops you traveling too fast early on, which can still be an issue even with a more slippery atmosphere. Now I'm going north to try and match a polar orbit, but there's another thing I want to do because the planet is rotating. I want to actually go slightly to the west to try to begin to cancel out the rotation. You see, if I click into the orbit uh, speed versus surface speed, what you'll see is the orbit speed includes the rotation of the planet, whereas surface subtracts that out. So I have to try and subtract that out if I'm going to go for a perfect uh, polar orbit here. So that's why I'm going slightly westwards, even although the orbit is exactly 90 degrees over the top. Now, we're just going to let this thing move over, follow a gravity turn that has more or less been preset by gravity. I mean, because the orbit is so high, there's less of a problem with making sure that you get your orbit exactly right. Um, you know, exactly, I get a good burnout point here. As long as you, ha you have enough fuel here, you're not going to run out of fuel trying to get into this orbit. The, the biggest danger is that you might have to do a very big plane change. And I will show you how to deal with a plane change. So yeah, pick speed is about Mach 3 now, and I'm thinking we're getting very close to an exact north-south orbit here, so I'm starting to push my nose back towards the, the north-south vector here. Now this is of course a best guess for our orbit. It, we will probably not be exactly on it, but that's fine, we'll make those corrections later. Look, now we switch to orbit, we can point our nose exactly along the north-south vector and make our way into space safe in the knowledge that we are doing a pretty darn good job of it. Don't worry if you haven't got it exactly as correct as me. It's not a problem. We're going to fix this later. The important thing is you get a nice, you know, clean orbit to start with. It doesn't matter if you're too high or too low. Also, those temperature gauges, turn those off right now because I hear there is a memory leak, which is not good. Memory leaks never are good for anyone. It turns out that the burnout of that main first stage has put us onto a 93 kilometer apoapse. So this is actually pretty good for a burnout. I'm just going to leave this here. Now, before we set up a maneuver node, we want to leave the atmosphere. So I'm time accelerating. Now I drop my time acceleration off. Now it says we need to reach the designated polar orbit. So first thing is we need to put ourselves into a, a low polar orbit, right? So I'm just going to pull that maneuver node out there, make sure we've got a good maneuver set up. You'll notice I don't have an estimated burn time, or the estimated burn is like one hour and something, because it's basing that off the previous engine which had run out of fuel. Now we've got a new engine. Uh, it doesn't actually know because we haven't fired it. The computer that's estimating the burn time is doing it based upon the last uh, thrust that you used essentially. It says we're going to need 515 meters per second and so I'm going to get within about 30 seconds and then just do a very small amount of thrust just so the thing can recompute. Oh, I turn, need to turn on my end. There we go. There. Okay, so it says it's going to take 22 seconds. So now we'll let it burn, let the time get a little closer and fire that. I see a lot of people keep asking why they can't make maneuver nodes. The maneuver nodes require that you upgrade, upgrade mission control and the tracking station both. Uh, maneuver nodes are incredibly useful. You don't, you don't absolutely 100% need them. I can get away without them, but it's a lot easier. So I strongly advise that players upgrade those buildings very early on. So that's us in our orbit. We are now wanting to get out to this big orbit, and there's 
Couple of things to notice here, see this at the top, ascending node? That is where the plane of the two orbits cross. If you imagine these circles, they form into a flat plane like a sheet of paper, right? And there's two different ones and they're not quite in alignment, so there's a line between these where they cross. So what I'm going to do is set a maneuver node here and just increase it, like when we were going to the moon. And I'm going to move it very close to our target orbit, just estimating it. Now the other thing I want to do is now adjust the timing of this. So you can actually pick up the node. Oh, oh crap, I picked up the wrong bit. Uh, you got to be careful. You pick up the node and drag it around the orbit slightly. What I want is for my Apple apps on that orbit to be as close to the node as possible. Right, so there we go. So the Apple apps is where you're moving the slowest in your orbit. And it turns out if you want to change your inclination relative to another target, you want to do it as slow as possible. Furthermore, you also want to combine maneuvers, but we'll, we'll get to that. So we've got these lined up. It's telling us we need a 34 second burn and we're two minutes away. If it turns out that you've missed the orbit, missed your chance, just let it go around another time and set up a man another maneuver node. It's not gonna, uh, it's not gonna be a huge problem if you have to miss an orbit. You have plenty of time here. So just running the clock down, obviously want to split this 50-50. So, there, I'm going to do 20 seconds. And the reason I'm, I'm starting slightly early, I said 50-50, but I lied. You want to use 100% thrust until you get down to close to the end of your maneuver. And then once you get there, you kind of want to throttle back so you can get the maneuver as exact as possible. See the blue, uh, the blue oval, the blue ellipse is coming up. It's coming up, it's coming up. We're going to bring it all the way to that yellow one. Now we're getting low, throttle down just a little, and then bring it up just a touch. So we're going to use a very small amount of thrust to get this as close to zero as possible. And bingo! There, cancel that! Okay, now we have to get these orbits aligned. We're going out, and if I turn the camera around, you can see that they're not quite perfectly aligned. So we need to now adjust our orbit. We, we could have adjusted it now, but that would actually be less efficient. You want to do it when you're going the slowest, and at Apple Apps, you're moving the slowest. So we're going to add a maneuver here. Just watching this, look as us flying over the pole. You have not seen the pole. That is a new biome, incidentally, if you want to go out there and collect the science. It's just there waiting for you to take it. So to adjust the plane change, uh, to adjust the inclination, you can drag these purple nodes, right? So I'm going to drag this one down. And let's see how that looks. That's moved it down a little. There, you see that? So we want to do that, but with simultaneous, I'm just going to adjust it back and forth. Let me just try and get this. It doesn't actually tell you in numbers how accurately how accurate your target orbit is. If you're actually trying to rendezvous with the target, it will give tell you exactly what the difference is after the maneuver. Now, that's the most efficient place to do the plane change, but we also want to perform the burn to get ourselves into orbit here. So you're just going to grab your prograde velocity and drag that out. There we go, you see that? But of course, by doing that, we've now changed our uh, final orbit. So we're going to fix that back again. You're going to adjust these two things until you get the orbit as close as possible to what you're wanting. 375 meters per second. Okay, we're going to need just a little more to get up to the target altitude. So again, drag that. Now you can also push these in, by the way. So you can drag it out to increase it or push it in to decrease it. There we go, 746. Uh, that's just maybe a little more. Uh, just touch, hold on, just trying to figure out. Just add a touch to that. There, 768 and 750. I think that might be close enough. Maybe we will just try to. Oh no! I don't know. I'm not sure about this. You're gonna you're gonna muck around these a whole lot. But you know what? It's gonna take a really really long time for that spacecraft to go all the way up there. So don't don't worry too much. You're not pressured in time. If you're trying to rendezvous with the target, that's when the time pressure really kicks in. So anyway, I'm going to accept that maneuver. 397 meters per second. And we're just going to smooth the spacecraft out there using time acceleration. 
I'm using manual time acceleration here, again using the keys, the dot and the comma for most people. And we can fly out there, watch this, watch the planet from below. We have a little bit of fuel left here, should be enough to get us into our target orbit. I think the LV-909 uses roughly 1.6 units of fuel per second at maximum thrust. So with a 13 second burn, we're only going to need about 20, second, uh, 20 units of fuel for this. So uh, now we're getting close to our target. We're going to turn the nav ball, turn the spacecraft using the nav ball until we point at the blue maneuver vector. There we go. Bingo. And just get that lined up and then we'll use time acceleration to move just a little bit closer in time to the target. The closer you are, the more accurate your maneuvers are going to be. The higher thrust you have, the more accurate your maneuvers are going to be, assuming you don't shoot past your maneuver. <laughs> uh, it can be very, uh, very much a game of patience here. Okay, there, about 10 seconds in, and just going to throttle up. I'm not even going to use 100% thrust here. 50% thrust means that the maneuver will take twice as long, but it means that once we reach the end, we will be much closer to our target. Uh, we'll be more, it'll be more easy for us to cut the thing out at the right time. Now, real rocket motors pretty much only go at 100% and zero thrust. So Kerbal Space Program is kind of unrealistic in that sense, but uh, it does actually make the game a whole lot easier. And bingo, there we go. That is us, close this down and see how good we are. That looks like a pretty good orbit if you ask me. The question is, do the contract judges think this is good? Ah yes, we've got everything. We have successfully put this into orbit. And so there, we shall end this tutorial and I shall hopefully be back with another one. I'm hoping this is acceptable given the limited capabilities available to me. If not, you can all shout at me and I'll make more when I get back to America. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.